The Penn State Nittany Lions are a very historic program that have been on track. It feels like it's been one or two players, wins, games, whatever, from maybe getting back to a Big Ten title and possibly even winning another one. They have yet to do it since 2016 when James Franklin took over for them. He is still their head coach. They're recruiting very well and out of their minds right now. But a big threat in Ohio State in the Big Ten East this year. Also, don't sleep too much on Michigan. Can they overcome some of that this year? Let's look at 2022 college football with the Penn State Nittany Lions. Let's go. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Christian Ballard, Ballard Sports Media, coming at you with a quick video today looking at the Penn State Nittany Lions for 2022. Um, they don't have a spring game, uh, at least what my grandmother told me, but uh, they do have practices. I think you have to have practices uh, in college football. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. So, that being said, we just kind of get down to business here. 2022 Penn State and Nittany Lions. What did they do last year, though? 2021, they went 7-6 and six overall. They made the Outback Bowl against Arkansas, which they lost 24-10. to I'm pretty high on Arkansas this year in ways. I just wrapped up the SEC with them in Mississippi State. So it's not too bad of a loss. It was only a two-point game uh, or two-touchdown game, I should say, Overall, um, when you look at it, too, um, with this season, and we'll get to that in a second, would that be favorable? But look at what they did here. They went, before their bye week, 5-1. and one. That's pretty darn good. Could they potentially be starting? Um, and, uh, you know, it's – how do I put this – it's pretty incredible to see, you know. Um, they had – it was like they had the best start, not the best finish overall for them um, in Big Ten play. Um, or really the whole season and in Big Ten play. I mean, they were four and five in Big Ten play. Uh, they did beat Wisconsin. They did beat Indiana. The losing games like how how do you lose to Illinois in nine overtimes right and I think I, I'm trying to remember what game it was someone remind me actually I think it ended up being that Iowa game um and they just never fully recovered for it I could get losing to Iowa great defensive game down to the wire okay if they have Sean Clifford the whole game do they win at Iowa? There's a great possibility. Um, but they didn't have him the whole game. He went down with an injury. Uh, he was able to recover at some point in the season, but it was a bit too late. Losing to Michigan, who won the Big Ten, I could get that. You shut out Rutgers. You beat Maryland. You lose at Ohio State. Those are games like some of these losses are excusable, right? Or, I mean, there's never an excuse for a loss. But it's like um, it makes sense. It's not teams you should shake your head or hang your head over. I think Penn State, though, I really think what James Franklin, the talk, the hype and everything, they have to be better than this. Uh, if you can see that highlighted there, seven and six. And they definitely got to be better than a four and five, under 500 Big Ten conference record and losing their last two games. Uh, they're better than this. And I think they're going to show that this year. You know, uh, they do lose guys. And um, I, I think Sean Clifford is leaving. Um, I, honestly, I'm not sure. Uh, someone let me know, is he going pro? Um, let me find that out. But I think I think he comes in as a junior. Um, announces decision. Oh, he's returning this year. Okay, 
So there's not really going to be much of a quarterback battle. It's going to be like an Alabama situation. You're going to have guys fighting for the backup spot, right? You're going to have guys – you you have your guy. Like Alabama has Bryce Young. Well, in this same situation here, Sean Clifford is the guy for Penn State. But you have Taquan Robinson, and then you also have a watch out for five-star Drew Al. I think it's Alar or Aller. Uh, my last name, but without the B. Um, I, either way, there are some quarterbacks that come in. They're recruiting out of their minds right now really, really well. Um, they did lose some guys to the portal uh, in Noah Kane. Um, they have a, a running back, though, a five-star in Nick Singleton. In fact, let's take a look real quick. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. But, again, beat teams like Maryland and Rutgers, okay. After the, the bye week, though, they went four and two – or two and four, win-loss, right? Just – I don't want to rip on them, but for Penn State, that's bad. That's bad. That's embarrassing. I don't want to rip on them too much, but, man, come on. Anyway, it was a tough year. They made the Outback Bowl, though. That's still a pretty good bowl game to go to. You only lost by 14 to Arkansas, who I think is going to bounce back this next year. Arkansas and Penn State are, are, are kind of in that same boat, aren't they? I mean, not, not because they face each other, but you got coaches, you got players coming back, you're losing some players. Uh, you had the best start, not the best finish to the season. It's kind of like that for both of those teams. But overall, seven and six, made the outback ball. You lose the ball game. Not the best of seasons. Um, and coming off a pandemic and everything, I, I, I could understand the three win 2020 year y'all had. I get that. I figure you do eight wins, nine wins or whatever. So you didn't completely over – like you didn't completely go under what I expect you guys to. I thought I picked you guys 10 and 2 or 9 and 3 or something. But uh, it's no big deal. Um, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I do think, though, I think they shake it off. I think they come into this year, and I think that they do such a great job. Looking at 2022, let's look at their schedule real quick. Actually, before we get to that, I do want to look at the recruiting because it's awesome. Now, they do lose a player to Taquan Robbins, Robertson. Uh, it is a three-star quarterback. He's going to UConn. Um, A.J. Litton's in the portal, who's a three-star corner. He's gone, uh, but it doesn't say where he's announced yet. Uh, Hunter Norzad is an interior offensive lineman you bring in. Um, I can't see what school. Let's see what school that is. I guess it's just from the portal. It doesn't say exactly where he is. Um, but anyway, I, let me pull the, the portal up for you guys here. Um, Noah Kane is going to LSU. That's pretty huge for Brian Kelly. I think he's a good running back. That is definitely a tough loss, though, for Penn State. Damian Robinson comes in, a four-star edge. I've seen him play a little bit. I've seen his high school film, at least. I don't know if he played at Maryland. I don't know what he did. It, it, and even if he did play, if he was good. But what I did see from him in high school, he's very fast off the edge, and he can get through blocks. Um, so that's good for your defense. Hunter Norzad uh, comes in to Penn State. Uh, Mitchell Tinsley comes in from Western Kentucky. Taquan Robinson, like I said, is leaving. A.J. Litton is undecided. But you bring in a couple transfers. Uh, overall, I think they're using the portal okay. Not really the best of ways, but um, in some ways they are bringing some stuff, especially to, to help the O-line and Sean Clifford. Um, in, in large ways. So, uh, and then Hunter Norzad on the interior line, I mentioned, um, it is probably one of their biggest pickups. Now, let's look at what they're doing recruiting wise, and we'll get into, um, you know, what they did last year and, and all that stuff. So, 
you look at uh, the 2022 commits that they've had. Nick Singleton is a five-star running back. They're really good. I mean, I think I think Penn State because of Noah Kane, Saquon. They had someone in between. Oh, Miles Sanders is with the Eagles. I mean, running back university, you want to come and compete with Tuscaloosa? Okay. Katron Allen is a four-star, 6'11", 220. That's wealth in his position. They bring in five-star quarterback Drew Aller uh, from Medina, Ohio, who's a five-star recruit, fourth in his position in the class, third in the state of Ohio. He's 6'4", 232. I think he's going to ball out. He's got a bright future. They bring in Bo Prabula. Rebola uh, from York, Pennsylvania. He's a three-star, but I've heard some good things about him. Drew Shelton, signed letter intent. Uh, Makai Flowers, Anthony Ivey. To, to show off a couple of these names that you could possibly see this year, a lot of great talent, honest, honestly, especially with some linemen. Vega, Ione. Or Lone, I don't know how you say that. Caleb Artis is a defensive lineman, a three star. He's 6'4, 290. That's a big guy right there. Um, and I mentioned some of these transfers. So overall, I, th- I would say their recruiting is great. Really, the thing about Penn State is that they're one of those teams that can recruit well, but can they put the talent on the field and go win the football games? That's the big thing there. Overall, uh, well, well, okay, fine. I do have them 10 and 2, but let me just go ahead and say what I think they're going to do. Um, let, let's just go ahead and get into it here. So, overall, you have the spring game coming up next Saturday. Um, I'm going to try to watch that on the big, big 10 network. I think that could be a good game. At Purdue, Ohio, at Auburn, Central Michigan, Northwestern, you get a bye week, which I think is good timing because you got a tough stretch here. Uh, at Michigan, you play Minnesota, you play Ohio State, at Indiana, Maryland, Rutgers, uh, and then Michigan State on rivalry weekend on November 26th to uh, close it out. So overall, is it favorable in some ways more than others? I mean, you should beat Rutgers. Let's just go ahead and cut to the chase. I think they do pretty good in the non-con. I even think that they go to Auburn and win that game. Only because, and, and I don't remember, I, th- I think I picked Penn State in that game. Maybe I picked Auburn. But uh, Auburn's had such a rough offseason overall, folks. I mean, they really have. And it's just, I, I don't want to sit here and be a jerk and say it's sad, pathetic, and embarrassing and all that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that at all. Um, should beat teams like Ohio at Purdue? That's that's a tough one. Purdue's really good at home. Out the gate, they're going to be good. Um, Michael Hogue, where are you at, sir? I'm, I'm going to need to talk to him a little bit more and get some insight on Purdue. Um, but I think Purdue is really a good team. This is a Thursday night game in West Lafayette, Indiana. I'm going to say they take an upset early on in the season to Purdue. Maybe they – I mean, Penn State's going to be really young this year. I think – Purdue's going to be kind of young, too, but they bring a lot back. Um, you know, I think that it's it's definitely something to watch out for, like I said. Um, you know, Purdue, they went 9-4 and four last year. Six-year quarterback, Aiden O'Connell, um, you know, it's – man – that's that's one of those trap games, you know. I've heard some good things about them. They they have some go, good momentum. They won against Tennessee in that Music City Bowl. Great, phenomenal defense. I'm going to say you lose that Purdue game. I think you bounce back with Ohio, though. I think you go to Auburn, you take care of them. Central Michigan, Northwestern, these are teams you should go and beat. By week, which is good timing, but Michigan does bring a lot back, too. It's the big house. It's Ann Arbor. I haven't even looked at Michigan yet, but I'm going to play it safe and say you do lose that game. Minnesota, Ohio State at Indiana, Maryland and at Rutgers, and then Michigan State. I want to say you beat Ohio State. Now, hear me out. 
I love C.J. Stroud. I love Henderson. I love everything they got. At some point, though, doesn't Penn State win that series again? They haven't won in six years this year, right? And they won when they shouldn't have won. This is the time where they should win this game at some point. Right? So, I would say, man, your losses are Purdue and Michigan. What if you lose that Michigan game? You carry some good momentum. That's, I, I mean, you come off a bye week, you would think they go and rest up and then come off the bye week and go win that Michigan game. I don't think that's going to happen. I think you can win at home against Minnesota. But what if you're carrying that momentum from the losses early on with Purdue and, and Michigan? You're still trying to find out your team. This is the perfect time to play Ohio State. You don't play them too early to take a loss out the gate. You don't take them too late in the year where Ohio State's figured out their team and identity, and they're going to find it out, and they're going to be really, really good. And trust me, I believe it when I say that Ohio State can very much win this game, and it's a great possibility that they will. My prediction, though, I'm going to say an upset on October 29th. Um, I'm going to say they get Ohio State, man. It's got to happen again at some point for Coach Franklin, right? He knows it. Everybody knows it. Is there a, is there a quarterback change? Is Drew Adler the, the guy to start right from day one? I, I mean, it, or is it Sean Clifford? Sean Clifford all the way? Maybe. If something happens, though, you have this five-star recruit and quarterback that you can put out there on the field. So, I don't know. Man, this is tough to call. I think you beat teams like in, uh, Indiana. Well, maybe. I don't know. I love – I'm telling you, I'm very high on Penn State this year. I'm just going to go ahead and give you my prediction and just say 10-2. and two. I think Indiana's taking a step back. Rutgers is Rutgers. Michigan State's a home game on rivalry weekend. Maryland is not as good as Penn State. Uh, they're losing some players. I don't think Mike Loxley is the right guy for that job. I, well, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't even think – Talia is that good of a quarterback. He's not his brother. I'm just going to say 10 and 2, 7 and 2 in Big Ten play. And again, the losses, uh, man, Purdue and Michigan, it could be 9 and 3 if you do drop that Ohio State game. But man, I don't know. I call a bold claim upset here. Unless there's something weird that goes on. With, like, Michigan, like, if you beat a team like Michigan, how do we know you can carry that two weeks later? One or two of those teams. Or you beat Michigan, you get so hyped up you lose to Minnesota and you can't shake it off, then you're back to back, to back losses here uh, with Ohio State as well. So, I mean, you got these games and – it, it, it is a tough stretch. It's an interesting stretch, but we'll see what happens. Again, they got their spring game coming up next Saturday. That's going to be something to watch. Spring games don't tell you everything you need to know about the teams this upcoming year, but it's to see where they are this far. And if they are very good, I'm sure that, you know, you can bet they're going to keep working and just get better and better throughout the offseason. But that's uh, April 23rd, next Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 Central on the Big Ten Network uh, is the spring game for Penn State. But anyway, that's going to do it for me, folks. I'm, you know, look, I'm just making a bold claim 10 and 2. Uh, I think that's the right record. Maybe I got the wrong losses. You know what I'm saying? 10 and 2 seems reasonable, Ballard, but. Uh, you know, they got to lose to Ohio State or, you know, maybe they go beat Purdue or something. I don't know. I'm, I'm taking a bold claim they beat the Buckeyes this year. At some point, that's got to happen again for Penn State, right? I mean, they have had their moments. It is a home game. Could that be their whiteout? And even if it's not, if it's a, even an afternoon game, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, home field advantage. Franklin knows what it takes. Got to have that defense. 
I'm not too sold. I'm I'm gonna love Penn State's defense this year for sure. I'm not too much sold that Ohio State has much of a defense. Now they got a quarterback. They got a quarterback. They got explosive weapons on offense. Hard to defend. I have a feeling Penn State can pull something like that off too. I really do. But I want to hear from you guys in the comments. It's not up to my predictions. I want to hear your predictions on Penn State in the comments below. I love you guys. Jesus loves you. I got them 10 and 2. We'll see. See what happens. But again, love y'all. Jesus loves you. He's got a great and amazing plan for your life. Please like, comment, and subscribe right here to Ballard Sports Media for more sports content. And until next time, folks, Ballard Sports Media, check it out. Love y'all. Roll Tide. Go Bucks. God bless, and y'all have a good one. Peace. Mm-hmm.